It is SRO at the Q in Cleveland as we welcome you to Game 2 of the Midwest Regional Semifinal. And Big Blue Nation has taken over this city and this arena. It is the number five seed, the Mountaineers of West Virginia out of the Big 12 facing the overall number one seed, the Wildcats of Kentucky who come in at 36 and 0, vying to become the first unbeaten team since Bob Knight's Hoosiers of Indiana back in 1976. Kentucky's last loss a year ago in the national championship game to UConn. Harrison on the drive. That is Aaron Harrison, a sophomore from Richmond, Texas. This is Trey Lyles playing for the injured Alex Poitras. Lyles, who has a good corner jump, goes to the runner. Tries to go baseline, got the step, but he's way off. And the rebound is handled by Lyles. And you guys are going to hear me say this throughout this game. If you're going to go with a shot blocker, don't try to change your shot. That's a three for Aaron Harrison. Kentucky with a 7-2 lead. Just underway. We've already had a total of five fouls called, four on West Virginia. And this is the defensive recipe that Huggins hopes to bring to the court tonight, hoping to make a little history himself. All right, thank you, Lewis. You saw that block at the other end. That's a three-pointer for Aaron Harrison. And back comes Andrew Harrison. Nice move and score. Well, I said the first 10 minutes would tell the tale. Right now, five first five minutes for West Virginia has been a nightmare. Another foul on West Virginia. This time it's Jay Sean Page who had just checked in. Definitely don't agree with that foul. Now here's Booker. Booker on the drive and score. Taking place here in the early moments. Kentucky with a 14 to 2 lead. Meanwhile, West Virginia just one of eight from the field. This is Booker. Eulis. Take a look at that Kentucky spacing right there. Oh, the lob from Marcus Lee. What a great call right here by coach Calipari and he says get out the way teammate no I can make a poster on my teammate too here comes the pressure from West Virginia if you're a West Virginia fan you hope that the offense or your defense is the catalyst for your offense as Harrison says listen it doesn't matter I can knock this short mid-range jumper down anytime I need to Tyler Eulis kicks it out has an open man and see, this is where Kentucky is most dangerous. Brown, we're going to pull it back. Now met by Eulis. Williams fires. Where's the offensive rebounding? Chris, you just mentioned it. Leading offensive rebounding team in the nation. And they don't have one blue shirt on the offensive glass. Oh, nice move. It counts to the foul. Lyles once again. And he will head to the line. Just overwhelming size and depth. Up front with how many NBA prospects that remains to be seen. As illustrated by the last offensive play for the Mountaineers, you see another three just, just go down. Booker knocking that down. But... Staten gets it inside. However, Holton is rejected. How frustrating, how deflating to have your shot blocked by your defender is standing still with his arms up. Open shot for Booker, yes. Kentucky with three rejections thus far. It's not like a sack, you can't get half a block right there on the team. <laughs> you calling for a change of the rule. Johnson, able to put it home. Yes, Mateo Johnson. I know it has been discussed, but I know West Virginia wishes that it was a shorter shot. I guess you see the oop right there. For Kali Stein. That's what happens when you get into the middle. As I said, John Calipari just spins the wheel and comes up with whomever he wants, and they're going to be effective. Elijah Macon has come on for Devin Williams. Devin Booker. And this is Macon. 
Now, it's not that they're not getting open shots, so it's not only the Kentucky defense. There's been space. Johnson with the finish. Hey, you gotta, Sometimes they do. His, doing Some, his job. Sometimes coaches just sit there and oh. the game out of, out of whack like this. They sit there saying, what else can I say? What else can I do? Here's the out of here. From the Booker to Colin Stein. NCAA tournaments. So we're headed to break. Timeout is called with Kentucky leading 54-19. Willie Cauley Stein now has three blocks. Very quiet at the offensive end, but three block shots, and Kentucky with seven rejections as a team. There's the lob. The message loud and clear. I'm sure he heard a little bit of it on the bench. As Virginia continuing the track. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Does not work as Booker lays it in. Oh, conventional. So that you do not have any room for slippage in your next game. And Notre Dame team that uh, shoots over 50% for this. Oh, what a move by. No! Oh, it counts. Andrew Harrison. Foul is called on Javon Carter. Well, that'll send them home happy. Even the West Virginia fans, the ones that are left, are standing up cheering in awe. Hmm. Now, going forward, you take a look at this Kentucky team on the road to perfection, on the road to history. Remember Notre Dame back in 1974 at Notre Dame. I, I got a feeling Notre Dame's going out to buy some tennis rackets yeah. and, and use those tennis rackets <laughs> to put their hands up to make sure that they can simulate the size of a couple Kentucky. Too. Timeout call as we approach three minutes to play here in Cleveland. The logo. I'm happy with his alma mater. Well, they beat the trap again, and here is Eunice for three, way off. Got glass, able to recapture, puts it up. So the out of here from Marcus Lee. Brown on the pull-up. Eulis, lead pass, another bucket. This time it's Trey Lyles. <laughs> For final seconds of a blowout right from the start. Non-competitive. Kentucky 78, West Virginia 39. The worst loss in the history of the NCAA. But uh, I would think among among them. Felt like it. <laughs> So a look at Saturday night's brackets. Game will be seen on TBS precisely at 8.49 Eastern Time. It'll be Kentucky going up against Notre Dame.